I made the biggest mistake of my miniature painting career and I caught it all on video. And this video is sponsored by the Army Painter. Yep, first big sponsorship and I ruin it. Good job, idiot. We all know the Army Painter is releasing the new Fanatics paint range, which is the best paint in the world. Probably. And we were sent a few early bottles to try out. Because they're sponsoring this video, this is not a review. The Army Painter didn't pay me to say nice things about them. They paid me to paint something cool. Let's see how I ruined it. Let's make this Void Dragon look like the Silver Surfer and try out these new Fnatic war paints. First colour, Deep Ocean Blue. I'm using the airbrush, but this is just a base coat, so you can do as you please. I just wanted to try these new paints through the airbrush to see what they were like, and they thin down really well. Now we're going to create some visual interest in the shadows with that Terrestrial Titan. Same thing, airbrush, but you know, you could dry brush this on, you could traditionally layer it up if you wanted to. And now we get to the good stuff. We're going to pull out the paintbrush and start layering on Tidal Blue. I think these paints and their one coat coverage really lends itself to this style. So we're going for a semi non-metallic, but it's a little bit more animated. And with that, we're going to start to really block in this color. We're looking for all the big wide panels, anything that is an upward facing surface. Leaving a lot of that deep ocean blue in the recesses is really going to make this pop and create separation between all of these pieces. I know it feels like we're leaving a lot of that dark base coat around, but trust the process on this one. Now you might notice that I'm not overly concerned with how neat it is at the moment. I'm looking for value and contrast. And to be honest, I was actually going for a completely different idea here. This was supposed to be a value sketch. And then, you know, there was going to be another technique that we used later on, but you will see how that got ruined. With Shield Wall Blue, we're going to do essentially the exact same thing, except we're going to highlight inside of those panels. The best way to visualize this approach is a topographical map where each layer is incredibly defined and the higher you go they actually change colors as well and we're using that exact same idea here to sell this kind of animated chrome effect. You can already start to see how drastic the layers are as we step up in brightness. When we were originally given the early copies of the Fanatics range, we didn't get a white. So I've actually taken the current white from the War Paints range and mixed it in with that last shield blue that we've used. So this is a very bright, cold white. And even with mixing the two ranges together, we still got all the properties of the Fanatics paint. So this is all still just one stroke coverage. Now what we're going to be focusing on with this really cold off-white is basically all the highest points. This is as high as the highlights are going to get for this model. If you want to try something like this for yourself and you'd like a reference photo, go and check out things like Mecha Animes or Manga or Comic Books and anything cell shaded will show you those really hard divide lines of where colours go and where different brightnesses sit to sell those effects. Now we can jump into making these shadows interesting and I'm going to use the exact same technique except we're going to start off in a magenta. So this is Diabolic Plum which is really just a dark magenta and we're going to start lining all the undersides. Now we're going to think of this as a shadow but if we're trying to sell a non-metallic chrome kind of feel, these are actually bounce lights. Chrome is hyper reflective, so that's what we kind of want to start selling here at this point. And using those exact same ideas of a topographical map, we're just going to do the exact same thing, but with purples and on the underside. That's it. That's this whole thing. Like I was saying before, this was all supposed to be an interesting value sketch because now we're going to come in with the airbrush and start to blend things together. But this is where things went horribly, horribly wrong. We shot a little too hard with the airbrush. This really sucks. I had to go back and redo everything that we had just done because it looked like we primed the model white and this is what it looked like after we did that. Now we're going to pull out the airbrush again, but you don't have to, and I'll show you because we have to brighten up anyway. This is to start attacking all the electricity, all the magic, or whatever comes out of a Void Dragon. The airbrush is generally the easiest, quickest way to start base coating things like this white, and you can get pretty fine and detailed with it, but for maximum opacity, the brush is a better idea. And with what we're going to do, we want that brightness. And now we get to use fluorescence. The inspiration here actually came from my computer's keyboard, uh, LED rainbow, essentially. That's what I wanted to make. It looks so damn cool. 
but you need a lot of space to really kind of sell the effect. So starting off, I went with magenta because I wanted that to be the top of the rainbow. We worked down through purple and then into blue. Now this is all of the Army of Paints air range which this was the first time I was using it and I found it was probably the first actual airbrush range that you could like drop the paint directly in and you didn't have to mix it down and it came out amazing. Now the trick to this is the blending. Now the blending can be a little bit difficult. So what you wanna do is overshoot the area a little bit more than you kind of want that color to be in and then the next color starts as an overlap. And that's all the blending is. Now you can see here that it is still a little desaturated. All these did take a couple of coats and I played around with the blending a little bit and I did actually go back in with the brush as well. Since I don't have a red fluorescent, I went over the orange with magenta and this made this super hot reddish orange and it was amazing. We continued into the magenta and I quickly shot some blue down the bottom to make it look like those plasma balls. And here's where I tried something new. Yep, right in the middle of a sponsored video, I just decided to go all in. Everything is an experiment. What I'm doing here is just edge highlighting. Now, it is a little heavier than I would typically go with an edge highlight, but that's by design. Having that little bit extra space means I can come in with those same fluorescent colors and blend them down together to create an outline of rainbow. It's all the same colors applied in the same order and overlapping. We're just using a paintbrush and we're just kind of glazing back and forward. Same thing a couple of times over. We do the details and here we go. the whole thing that is our rgb rainbow non-metallic chrome silver surfer kind of animated something done and i think it looks pretty damn cool massive thank you to army painter for sponsoring the video and big love to all our prismatic patreon heretics see you next tuesday